Uh, so I want to go ahead and introduce Katie Geelan. She is a rock star support marketplace support specialist. Um, if you've ever placed an order on Quartzy, you may have communicated with her. Um, she's really great and she's been with us for about two years. Uh, so Katie, take it away. Yeah, guys, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, today's session will go for about 30 minutes and we'll have plenty of time for questions. Uh, like Emily said, if you have a question, just pop it into the chat box uh, in Zoom and Emily will take those down and we'll stop to answer those. And today we'll go over our lab settings, the request module and inventory module, as well as the court seat shop. As always, if you have any questions, uh, you know, especially if we don't get to your question, go ahead and email us at support at and I'll definitely get back to you there. Next, right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first I wanna orient you by, or I'm gonna start by orienting you to your account and what you're seeing on the main page when you log in. Notice your profile icon is over here on the right. And that's where your personal account settings are located, as well as your email notification settings. So if you wanted to change the frequency of your email settings, that would be there. You know, I'm I'm only seeing your slide deck, Katie, that says live demo. Oh, um, let me see here. Thank you for yeah. <laughs> telling me. Is that what everyone's seeing? Can someone let me know in the chat box? Yeah. It looks like Zoom has, okay, now now it's back on. I'll let you know okay. if that happens again. <laughs> yeah, please do, that's that's strange. I know that we were having some issues uh, on our past webinar with that as well. So I do apologize about that. No so worries. let me go back here. <laughs> so I was saying that the uh, your profile icon, where your profile settings and email settings are, are located can be found here. So this is where you change like the frequency of your uh, of your email notifications and stuff like that. We have the link to the help center right here, your lab shopping cart here. And then on the left side of the toolbar here is where your lab selection and module selections appear. If you're in more than one lab, you'll be able to click on this and select the lab you'd like to go to from this menu. There's a request module here, which we're already on. This is your lab's digital shopping list where requests and orders are tracked. Your inventory module is here. This is your lab's list of what's currently in stock, including where everything is located and all the important item data. We have the shop here, and this is the easiest way to find and request items that you'd wanna order from Port C. And then lastly, we have our global search here. We can easily search across the shop inventory and your request all at the same time. So next up, we'll go over how to view and manage your lab's details. In the top left corner, I'll open this menu, like I said before, to select the lab that I'm interested in. And then I'll click on this gear icon to get to the manage lab pages. First off, you're gonna see this members tab. And this is where you can see a list of all current uh, members and admins in your lab. And next we'll head over to the lab settings page all the way to the right here. And this is where you can view basic settings such as inventory uh, editing permissions, uh, approval steps. So in this lab, ap approval is required. If this was selected, that would mean no approval from a lab admin would be required. And then note that only lab admins are able to actually edit the settings on this page. Uh, and for a member, it would be more of a view only page. There's a few other tabs in the section which we'll go over later, such as the addresses, um, backups, vendors where you can store contact information, and then customization options for your lab's inventory in the types and locations tabs. So let's go over to the request module here. You have your search bar and filters on the left-hand side. You can filter by vendor, by requester, 
and then your grant ID, project code, or account number, whichever spin tracking code that your lab is using, and then the type or category of that request. And this new tab, like I said, can be thought of as your lab's digital shopping list. These requests have been recently submitted by someone in the lab, and they're waiting for a lab admin to approve them and place an order. So the approved tab lists the request that an admin has approved and plans to purchase, but has not yet placed an order for. If your lab doesn't have an approval step, you won't see this, uh, this tab here. The order tab here lists items that have been ordered and are waiting to be received by the lab. From the order tab, requests wait to be delivered to the lab. And then once they've been received, someone in the, someone in the lab should mark that request as received in Port C. And note that anyone in the lab, member or admin, can mark a request after received and simultaneously add it to the inventory. And we'll go over that process a little bit later. The only uh, role that can mark a request as approved or ordered is an admin. So this receive tab here will list the orders that have been through the full ordering and receiving process. So as an example, let's take a look at one of these. So clicking on the item name will bring up this item detail panel. And it will show first all the request details, then followed by the order details. And then there's a vendor section below that that you can add any kind of contact information that you want. And then we'll have a history section, which lists the uh, most recent to the oldest action. So you can see that this was requested by Samantha and then ordered by her as well. And then Robin Green marks this as received. So let's go over how to add a new request. We'll click this blue add request button. And this will take us to the item lookup. You can search the general term in this top field. So say, sodium bicarbonate, or if you know exactly what item you need, you can always look that up here. So I'm gonna look for a Sigma Aldrich item. So a few results will appear. The found in Quartzy shop here option will add a Quartzy request. This found in Sigma Aldrich option will add a request that lists Sigma as a vendor instead of Quartzy as a vendor. This option is generally used to add a request if your lab receives special contracted pricing with a vendor and you plan to purchase directly from them because of that. But let's say we do want to buy this item from Quartzy. So I can select this first option here. I do want to add a couple of details here. So I want to add this uh, chemical type here. By default, everything will be a uh, general supply, but obviously I know this is a chemical, so I'm going to select that. And I'm going to also select the projects that I want this to be built under. And I'll go ahead and click request. And then we can go to the new tab here to see that request that we just added. Click on the item name to, again, open up that detail panel. And you'll see your quote number, the availability, all the order information that Port C automatically fills in. But let's say I added a, a request for quantity one, but I just noticed that I need two. I can actually let my ad, lab admin know by tagging her in a comment. So I'll tag my admin and just say, please order two. And then she'll be actually notified by email of that comment so that she can then update the quantity on that request.
And then it looks like maybe this might be a good time to stop for questions if anyone has any so far. Uh, so Emily, have we gotten any questions quite yet? Yeah, actually there are a couple questions, Katie. Thanks for taking a moment to stop. Um, so someone had a question about, you know, when you were talking about searching before, um, how does it work if you're searching for bottle versus bottles? We've just recently made some updates to make that a little bit easier, right? Um, yeah, so what specifically are you wanting to search? Like a specific item or a specific size of an item? Um, well, like what are you, is it going to pull different results if you search bottle versus bottles, plural? Oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, so we do have like- An inventory, a, let's say. Right, so uh, those should pull up the same thing. So we do have a, uh, basically an elastic search, which would search, um, you know, if you have a typo or something that's maybe slightly different or something like that, uh, it still should uh, pull up the same results. Cool. That's great. Nice and easy. Um, and then we had a question about, um, so it looks like someone had added some items yesterday that are not showing up with a search. Is there a delay in that? Um, so usually items will be immediately searchable. Right now we actually do have a bug in the system that's causing uh, basically a delay in the indexing. Um, our engineers are working on that right now. But in general, <laughs> you know, the once you add an item, it should be immediately searchable. Perfect, perfect. So hopefully they'll get that kink worked out soon and then it will be back to normal. Yeah, it's definitely a, a high priority for them for sure. Yeah. Um, what should someone do if the vendor is not in the list? Okay, yeah, and I was actually gonna go over that uh, uh, right after this. So that's kind of a perfect segue. So I can get started on that section here. Great. So let's go over what happens when, you know, the item you're looking for isn't available to be purchased from Fort C. We'll go back to this blue add request button. And then let's search for the item. So you can see this first pulls up equivalent products in the courtship shop that we offer, but not the exact product. If you scroll down a little bit or hide this, you can see that found in Tiagen result. So to add a request here, you would just want to enter your, uh, your lab's pricing if you know it, and then add your request. So let's say I know that's my pricing. I'll add that request. And then a lab admin will actually need to place an order outside of Court C with, with Kyogen for this item. And then Court C will also offer this. These, are, uh, these quotes or offers are completely optional. So if you wanted to purchase that, you could click accept quote. And if you don't, you can just hide that. So Katie, I have a quick question. So that would be one way if, if um, a university has their own like ePro system, that would be one way to be able to manage things in Quartzy, but order from their ePro system if we didn't, um, if we weren't an approved vendor through that university, correct? Exactly, yes. So that would be exactly it. So let's look at uh, what happens once an item actually gets delivered to the lab. I'll find the request in the orders section here. And then we'll have this mark receives button over to the, to the right. I'll click that. And then we get this window here that first shows the details of that item. And then it has a selection to add item to inventory, which is by default already selected. And it looks like we already have this item in our inventory. And right now we have two units and I'm receiving one more. So I wanna change this number to a three. And that way, when I add this item to inventory, it'll denote the correct you know, amount in stock that we're having. And it looks like the other items are already in TC fridge one. So I'll add this item there too. 
and a no sub location. And then since Samantha was the one that actually added this request, she'll receive an email letting her know that this item has been received as well as the location information. So go ahead and click save. And then we can go over to the inventory module to see the item that we just added. Sorry, is my screen frozen for you guys as well? Nope, it's working. Okay. All right, here we go. Sorry about that. So we can sort by the added or updated as I just did a couple of times there. Uh, sort, you can sort by either of these columns. Uh, to bring up, you know, the most recent, especially, you know, like right now when we're having that indexing issue. Uh, if you go by added or updated, you can see the most recently added items uh, in your inventory. So here's the item that we had just marked as received. So let's say we want to add a few more details to the inventory record for this item. We'll click on the item name to open the item detail, just like we did in the request module. And let's say I just want to add maybe a protocol or an SDS file. I would just click this upload file, find the file on my computer, and then upload it that way. And then this file will be viewable and downloadable for everyone in the lab. So I also want to add the expiration date for this item. And I'm also going to set a reminder. So one month before, I'll receive an email to the email address that I log into Courtsy with, reminding me of, of this expiration date for this item. And then similar to the request module, the inventory module has these search bar and filter on the left-hand side. So you can filter by location, as well as sublocation. type, vendor, as well as owner. An owner is generally going to be the person who added the item to the inventory or uploaded the file of an item. Are you able to upload a photo also? Yes, I believe you can upload pretty much any kind of uh, file. I don't believe there are any um, limits to the to the type of file so it could be a jpeg yes yes um even you know an excel spreadsheet or um or anything like that so the last thing we want to go over here is the Corsi shop so this is available for labs located in the us um so when you go to the shop you'll first see this large search bar here we can type in any search item so say I'm looking to buy some PBS for my lab, I'll go ahead and type that here. By default, this is gonna be sorted by best match. You can also sort by price. And in the future, we'll have the, the availability to search by uh, you know, estimated delivery date, availability, and stock information as well. And let's look at this first result. This is a Sigma item that has a ships from Quartzy message. This basically means that it'll be shipped from one of Corsi's two fulfillment centers. And if we scroll down, we'll see a couple of results that don't have that message on them. If an item does not have that message, it means this is going to be drop shipped directly from one of our supplier partner warehouses. Scroll back up top here. In the results view, you'll be able to see the basic item information, available sizes, the pricing, and the estimated delivery date if this uh, is a Quartzy item. Clicking on the item name will open up its product page 
with a bit more information on that product. And then you can also add a request as a member right from the Quartzy shop. So it'll open up your request form. You can select the quantity. And all of the information that you would usually select. And again, we can just go to the new tab in our request module to see that request. And this is probably a good time to uh, stop for more questions. We're about to the end here. Yes, let me see here. Um, I've got a really good question about locate sublocations. So is it possible to make secondary sublocation so like a sublocation of a sublocation or why can't why can't labs do that is that something we're looking at yes so that is definitely something that uh that we have a feature request for and it's you know it's on the on the docket to be considered for development uh, i don't have a timeline for that right now though so if you wanted to maybe like designate uh more levels of sublocations I would basically suggest something like this. So say this is my location. These are my sublocations. I can add a little bit more distinction. Just by using, you know, a couple more naming, naming uh, institutions in here. So that'll kind of further designate where that is. And you can also add location details to an item. Let's take a look at that. So in a freezer box, those location details would be the box position. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> yes, it's kind of a little workaround to add more yes. detail, but hopefully we'll add that to the product roadmap soon. It's great to get the, those feedback and ideas and we're always you know, looking for that kind of feedback. So keep them coming guys, always feel free to reach out to our support team and let them know when, when you've got questions or ideas like that too. Oh yeah, we, um, we love feedback. So support at courtsy.com is a great place to submit any ideas that you have. Awesome. Uh, let's see, got a couple more questions here. Are we able to categorize, categorize, excuse me, inventory items under labels that we would want to create such as wet lab versus dry lab? Yes. So we want to go to the types here. And I do have a, uh, we do have a inventory uh, webinar which goes into a lot more detail about all of this. Uh, but for now, we'll just go over some basics here. So all of these here are types that can be added and come with, you know, basically pre-filled or pre-designated um, uh, custom fields. But you can also add a completely custom type. And then this type, just know it will come with all of these fields all of the fields and found in standard fields for all types, these fields will all be on every single type that you add. And then you can add more custom fields here. Just let the format. And you can even designate that, that field as required. And so if someone went to add a, an item to this test type and they did not fill in this field, they would actually not be able to add that item until they filled this out. So does that kind of answer uh, that question? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. Next question, is there a way to update quantity after putting in a request? Um, as a member, you are not actually able to update the quantity, but the lab admin is. So again, uh, if we go here, you can see uh, everyone that's an admin 
And so if you wanted to tag any of them or whoever in your lab was responsible for doing the actual ordering, that's when you would go and say, you know, maybe I don't need four. So I just want to tag Derek and let him know, like, hey. And then Derek would get an email. He notifying. would get an email letting him know, and then he would be able to go ahead and update that quantity. Easy peasy. Um, I know you mentioned that there is a bug right now where up, uh, inventory items that are uploaded might not be showing up right away. How, what is the Quartzy policy in general about notifying people of those bugs or what do you recommend if someone's noticing that something isn't working? Yeah, definitely uh, just email me over at uh, support at courtsy.com. I will report it to our engineering team. And when it's something like this, that's actually preventing, uh, you know, a feature from being used, such as the inventory search, that is a very high priority. So I know that our engineering team is currently working on that now. Uh, so that should be fixed fairly quickly here. Um, but anytime that you have either a, you know, a feature request or an idea, or a bug to report, the support at courtsy.com email is gonna be the best one. If anything is actually down, we do have a status page, which I can email out to you later, because I'm not sure about the exact um, URL for that right now, but we do have a courtsy status page. Great, so the status page will have any mm -hmm. updates of things that might be going on that people need to be aware of. Right, and that would be um, more, most likely more used to, for uh, maintenance notifications and if, maybe the whole site is down or something like that. Okay, so kind of those more rare occurrences. Mm -hmm. what, could um, Quartzy users use that live chat option in the bottom right corner if they're noticing something not working properly? Yes, definitely. This is also a really good uh, way to communicate with us. Um, you can see that we're not online right the second. Uh, so if you left a message through here, we would get back to you in the email address that you include here. Um, but I will, you know, start doing more uh, live chat. So I'll be online more uh, in the next few months here. It's okay. You're just busy doing a webinar right now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can't do everything. <laughs> but that's a great option. If you just quickly want to get that note in there, then, you know, Katie or someone else from the team will get back to you as soon as they can. Yeah. And that way you don't have to leave, uh, you know, the courts app or anything. So just another question came in, um, with adding custom fields, is it better to add the field in Excel, fill it in and then upload it or add it in Quartzy and then fill in the information? Oh, that is a really good question. Yes, and so that will actually depend on the type of, um, the type of item as well as where it's located. And I say that because if you're uploading uh, freezer box items, You'll definitely want to create those locations and sublocations in your lab first. So you'll want to create these boxes here. And Quartzy first. Anything else that's not in a freezer box and is just in a standard location, so anything other than a freezer box, you can easily add those to the Excel um, template, and those will be. You know, if you added flammables cabinet one to the your Excel template, that would be uploaded. Very cool. Did you have other? Oh, we got another question. Can you please explain again about uploading the Excel sheets? Uh, yeah. So like I said, I, I wasn't planning on getting in too much detail on this webinar. Um, but we, can say, we can send out a help center doc about, you know, uploading, doing the inventory upload as well in the email I send out tomorrow. Yes, absolutely. And um, I am always available to assist with those uploads. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's not always the most uh, straightforward process for some people, and I'm definitely happy to, uh, to assist with those. Uh, but basically, you would just click import over here. You download your template.
And then in that template will be all of the types and fields that you have in here, as well as the locations. Now, what if, what if you do an upload and, upload and to... you realize a mistake was made and you want to revert back to pre-upload? Yeah, so if you did that, you could just export your current inventory or say, I know I just imported only some antibodies and that's what I want to change. I'll export just that antibody type. And then with that file that's downloaded, you can make your changes as well as delete items and then re-import that file. And that will edit all the items that you have edited and it'll leave alone uh, or leave as is the ones that you did not edit in the file. And then you'll just import that back and that'll make your changes. So that's a good way to make any kind of editing changes that you need in bulk. Awesome. And like I said, I will, I'll, we'll send out um, some help center documents on this since this is um, always a, lo there's always a lot of questions about this. There's a, there's, you know, quite a bit of information on, on how to do this. So you'll want to check out how to import and export the inventory, um, you know, before attempting to do it. So I'll get some links out for that. Yeah, I feel like I could maybe do a whole webinar on just that. So maybe that's a we'll great do that idea. In the yeah, that's a really great idea. Um, we did have a question from Linda, but I wasn't sure exactly what she was referring to. She said, "Will you show the approval setup process for POs?" I wasn't sure, Linda, if you were talking about how to check out using a PO, or if you were more interested in learning, like how to get approval at your university. Um, so I don't know if you can quickly talk about the different checkout methods, Katie. Um, yeah, and this will be, uh, you know, checkout methods are, are more uh, for lab admins who can actually check out because a member is actually not able to place orders. So we can go to our cart here and you'll see that this is kind of grayed out and it has a message only lab admins are able to place orders but you can always see all of the relevant information and you can always print a quote or create a requisition form. So say that, you know, my lab admin requests a quote so that they can place an order here. We can go ahead and just easily generate that quote. And it'll have all those items and all the pricing information and everything. And as far as approval steps, it'll kind of be the same thing where only admins can actually change that information for approvals. But you can always see what your lab has set up here. So in your lab settings, you'll be able to scroll down here. And then in the workflow section is where we'll outline this, uh, this approval setting. And this is kind of perfect. We just had a question come in asking about how some how an item moves from new to approved. And so that would be done by by an admin once they approve that request. Exactly. So if you're a member, you'll see the submitted or cancel option next to your request. So submitted means that when a lab admin comes in, they'll be able to see an approve button here. So if you're an, a lab admin, you'll be able to approve from this new tab. And it'll go to approved and it'll have instead of in cart or approved, it'll have a um, mark ordered or add to cart button if you're an admin. That is great, Katie. Um, we guys have such great questions coming in. Uh, sorry, you might be hearing my daughter in the background. I'm sure like many of you, you might be working from home sometime uh, during COVID times. Um, can we buy items from Quartzy with a purchase order to Quartzy? That's a great question, Thomas. And that, so the, Katie, you can talk more about that. It sounds like that's something more that an admin would worry about, but, but the answer is yes. 
Yes. So we have a couple of different purchasing options here, and you can always see which is your lab's preferred payment method here. Again, in the lab settings. So this specific uh, lab is set to purchase order already. And a lot of you know, users at a university are using this other payment method because they're checking out maybe uh, with a purchasing department, requisition form, or purchasing system. Uh, but you can also choose a P card or credit card would be this credit card option. And then with this purchase order option, all lab admin needs to do is actually enter the PO number uh, when they go to check out in the cart. So does that kind of answer the questions about purchasing options? Because like I said, that'll mainly be uh, in a lot of admin's hands. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you had, kind of, you had shown in the settings. So if, if a member you know, needs to be promoted to an admin, their, their admin can do that in the settings and transfer them from member status to admin status so that they have the ability to do more things like check out with a PO. Yeah, so if you're an admin, you'll have a, basically it'll be a little arrow right here and you'll be able to switch over the role as well as remove people from a lab and there'll be a blue invite button up here so that you can add people to the lab as well. Got a couple questions about receiving shipment notifications. How does that work? Um, yeah, can you tell us, can members receive shipment notifications? Uh, yeah, so say that this had been ordered. So since Robin is the one that requested that item, she would definitely receive, or she or he, would receive uh, a notification when the item is ordered, or I'm sorry, approved, ordered, marked received, as well as when it's shipped. So if it's a courtesy item, you'll receive a, email notification with the tracking information in it as well. And then you can always come over here and oh, I guess I don't have anything in the order tab, but if I did, you could see the, um, the status of that order as well as tracking on this end. Awesome. That is great. So this, um, again, this would be a little bit more applicable to admins, um, but there was a question about, you know, what do we do to get our vendor discounts when ordering? So that would be, um, like I showed you for the Kyogen item, you'll want to submit it as a non courtesy request. And basically, so anything with, without this orange courtesy logo, is going to be a non courtesy request. So this kind of tells the admin that uh, courtesy may not offer this exact item. And so we just want to place an order outside of courtesy for this item. So at so that time, you would just open a new tab in your browser, go to the Kyogen website and order it through there. Correct. And then, uh, you know, that would be a live admin and then they would be able to come in here and, you know, fill in this confirmation number, the tracking information. And these are fields that if you order from Port C will be automatically updated. And if you order outside of Port C, a lab admin will need to fill those in. So they'll do that manually for items that are not placed in Port C, but Correct. they'll still be able to track the item's progress and the location of the item in Port C. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Hopefully that answers those questions. Um, what happens to the data when someone is no longer in a lab? Like, let's say, you know, I was in a lab and then I leave Quartzy. What happens to all of the data related to my requests and my inventory? Uh, yeah, so let's say Irene has submitted this request here. So let's say she leaves the lab. This request would still stay in the lab. It would still say from Irene G. And anything that she's added to the inventory will still be there with her as the owner. And you'll still be able to filter by her name. So all the information will be staying in the lab. Um, the only issue that 
might happen is say Irene was the owner of this item. It might not be able to be edited unless we actually change this to someone who's in the, uh, the lab currently. And you can always just change the owner pretty easily here. And you can do that in bulk as well. Yes, yeah, so you can do that in bulk with the uh, Excel process. Great. You guys are going to be quartzy pros after this for sure. Mm -hmm. And does that work the same way with an admin? If an admin leaves, can you easily transfer over to another admin? Yes. So we definitely recommend that you have at least two admins at all times. That way, you know, if an admin is out or uh, they're not available, another admin is available to proof orders, place orders, or make any changes to the lab settings or members. Uh, but it'll be the same thing where all their request information and inventory information stays the same. And that's pretty important for, uh, you know, accurate record keeping and all of that to have that information stay in the lab. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good recommendation, having two admins. For sure. Nice. What other questions do you guys have? We've gotten to, it looks like I'm all caught up in our chat box. Do you have any, any other last minute tips or anything, Katie? Uh, that was about it for the uh, webinar. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, definitely let me know. Like I said, that the uh, support at courtsy.com. Um, I'll have access to that and I'll get to those uh, pretty soon here. If you ever have any questions about an order that was ordered from Courtsy, orders at courtsy.com is a good place to start. Um, I'll definitely send you guys instructions, um, or I'm sorry, a link to our help center as well as the upcoming webinars here. We did get one, a, a last minute question. Oh, a couple last minute questions. We still have a little bit of time here. Um, how do you keep track of partial orders that come in? Okay, that's a good question. Yeah, because that, especially during this last year with COVID, that can happen quite often. So let's find something. I might actually have to sign in as an admin to show you this. Closed her up too soon. Oh. For some reason, my Safari is not liking the um, Google login. But... <laughs> there you go. So since I'm an admin, I'm able to mark these as ordered. I just signed in as an admin of this lab here. So we ordered 10, but say we have only received five. So I'll just change this quantity received here and then select this partial delivery selection here. And anyone in the lab, member or admin can do this. The only reason I needed to sign in as an admin was to get this into the ordered <laughs> tab. So uh, you as a member would be able to do this as well. So we would just add that to the inventory. And then you can mark the remaining five as received once those come in. That looks pretty easy. That's good. 
Um, Julie sent in a question. She says when she's checking, when she's updating an item that was put into Quartzy before she was, you know, worked there and was in Quartzy like a chemical, um, sometimes she has trouble updating the information because it's requiring a date, like a date received, but she might not have that information. Um, are we talking about a request or inventory? I'm sorry. I think in inventory, when she's looking at an item that she's trying to update. Hmm. I don't know that any of them will require a date unless you, unless a, an uh, admin has basically selected a date to be required. Okay, so it could just be a matter of that box being checked. That exactly. An admin needs to go in and uncheck it and make it not required. Right, or you will you can just fill that in uh, with, you know, NA or <laughs> however you want to do that. Just to bypass it. Right, but I don't think that Quartzy actually uh, requires a date. Uh, by default. So that would likely be uh, a custom field that someone had set up. Okay. Um, okay. So I think um, she might have a couple more questions after that. So maybe she can reach out to us after and um, discuss a little bit more in detail so we can kind of get an idea of what's going on there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then another question came in about getting item ship notifications. It sounds like um, this person is an admin, but not getting the notifications, especially if another person item ordered the item for her. Is that, are there any glitches with that or should that be working pretty consistently? Um, the only thing I would recommend is checking your email settings here. So you can be updated on your own requests and you can select the frequency here. And then if you are an admin, you can also select to be notified uh, if the request is approved by someone else. Uh, so you might be set to never hear or even weekly. So you can go ahead and select immediately for that and you'll be uh, notified of everything. Great. And Yulia, if you still have questions about that and you're noticing that, you know, there's no issues with the lab settings and definitely reach out to us at support and we can help you look into that further. Yes. Perfect. Any other last minute questions? Katie, you were able to cover a lot of information today. This has been really helpful. Yes, I hope so. It's, it's even for me as I've been here for a couple of years and I still learn tips and tricks from you on these webinars, which is really great. Well, it looks like, um, looks like we can go ahead and wrap up. Um, I'm glad we're able to get to everyone's questions. If you still have questions, like Katie mentioned, please, please, please email us. We're always happy to help and we can kind of, you know, dig a little deeper, maybe even do a screen share and really find out what's going on. Or, um, you know, if you have ideas, like she mentioned, please, please uh, get them to us. We're always looking for more ideas and how we can improve Quartzy and what we can do better and what would be really neat and interesting. So reach out to us anytime. And thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thanks. Those are really great questions too. Yeah, definitely. Check out our upcoming webinars and we'll see you soon. Bye guys.